what's good we're back in this thing today we're going to be going over this fpv drone boomerang effect using google earth studios super sauce no one's doing it yet i'm going to be showing you how to get your hands on google earth studios as well as how to use it and how to sauce it up a little bit so it doesn't look as much like google earth if you're new to the channel what's good my name is brian go ahead and hit subscribe we're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year i've been doing a lot of music video effect tutorial breakdowns and stuff and if you guys are interested in more google earth tutorials smash the like button drop a comment really let me know that you guys want to see this because it's a little bit out of the normal for the channel so let me know if you guys want some more google earth tutorials before we get into the video if you want to support the channel support me as a creator you can go over to my website briandelmata.com check out my packs and presets it helps you save time and also level up your editing game for music videos and other effects i'll have a link below as well as some tutorial playlists on all the effects that you can do with the packs it's the best way to support the channel and it's really appreciated but yeah guys let's get into this video and break it down so starting this video off a little bit different here we're actually on google earth studios i'll have the url link below but it's google dot com slash earth slash studios it's in beta right now so you're going to have to apply i went ahead and applied and said that i was going to make a tutorial on it so i don't know if i got expedited or something because of educational purposes but they did it like literally the same night like within like four hours or something like that i was looking it up and people were saying it could take anywhere for like a week but i got lucky it's definitely dope to use right now because it's a little bit more exclusive not everyone has access to this so definitely use it while you can and kind of you know pioneer the way of using google earth studios to you know, add drone shots or whatever into your music videos. Once you get accepted to the Google or Studios, they'll send you an email. You can click Try Earth Studios up here in the top right. My favorite thing about this is how easy it is to use right off the bat. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using one of the quick starts. So if you see Blink Project here, click the drop arrow and then go to quick starts. And I'm gonna be using the Orbit one. There's plenty of ones you can use. Like I said, if you wanna see some more tutorials and more effects that you can do with this, let me know. But the one we're gonna be choosing here is Orbit just orbits a location. The effect you saw me do was on the Willis Tower in Chicago, but let's go ahead and do something different, maybe like the Eiffel Tower, and you just type in Eiffel Tower, or if you have a specific spot you want, you can type an address, whatever. It's basically just Google Earth, so you can really do anywhere on the world that's been mapped out, which is a good majority of probably places that you're recording videos at. And then I'm just gonna go ahead, and since it is the Eiffel Tower, I kinda want it to focus a little higher up on the Eiffel Tower here. I'm gonna have the altitude be a little bit higher up too. And then the radius at which it circles a little bit more out so you can see the sun up here. What you saw in the clip was actually a mixture of two shots. And this is what's so cool about Google Earth Studios is that since it's completely digital, it's almost like having one of those crane shots that you see in music videos where they do the exact same motion over and over again, but you can take out and add stuff. For our case, we're gonna be doing a day shot and then a night shot so you can see the solar system in the background as well as you can see Earth lit up at day. Play around, switch any of these settings. Say you wanted to start facing a certain way, you could drag this. Else, dude, they're all pretty self-explanatory. Just tweak around with whatever looks good for you. And then I'm gonna change the time to 10 seconds just to speed it up a little bit. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much. You can have it last as long as or longer or as short as you want. And then go ahead and click enter there right off. You can see you basically can render this out and have a cool drone FPV shot of the Eiffel Tower here. But some things we're gonna do to spice it up a little bit is go to add attributes and then I'm gonna add field of view, time of day, and roll. Roll's experimental, so it might like be a little glitchy or whatever, but since I've used it, I haven't had any issues. So just keep that in mind though. And then you can see it plays the time of day it is right now. So apparently the sun is rising in Paris right now. And that's a super cool shot, like the sun just right over the horizon. But say you obviously aren't recording at this exact time that I am, you can play around with the sun and you can bring it down, up, whatever. I think for us, we could do two separate ones, maybe like the sun right here so it has that like flare and then I would do one at night as well. So what we're gonna do here is I just wanna get that boomerang effect that I had and to enhance that, I start off with it zoomed in, maybe something like field of view four. So it's like really close up on the subject here. So in our case, the Eiffel Tower, as well as bring the roll to something like whatever you think looks good. I think I'm gonna do 7.5. And if you're familiar with Premiere Pro or After Effects, assuming that you watch my channel, you are, and you know what keyframes are, all you have to do is just keyframe the roll and the field of view. And for us, we did our, our composition is 300 frames. So I'm gonna go right in the middle at 150 here and drag it negative 75 for the roll. 
and then I'm gonna bring the field of view out to whatever we think looks good. You can bring it out as crazy as you want. That's what's so cool about this, it's all digital. So you could like really go crazy with the field of view. For example, 90, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight these two keyframes, hold Control C on my keyboard, and then go to the end and press Control V. And that's going to have it end at the exact same spot it starts. So you'll be able to loop this infinitely without really ever telling where it starts or finishes. Then I like to also highlight all these keyframes and you go to animation. They also have this easy ease option, basically just smooths out the motion of what we're doing. And you can see here, crazy shot of the Eiffel Tower with the sun there. And it's just going to repeat the process over and over again. And that's pretty much all I'm going to touch as far as the keyframes, since we already have that built-in orbit. Like I said, if you want more in-depth tutorials with us starting with blank stuff and like keyframing shots or whatever, we can go ahead and do that. But I really like this. It's a good introduction to Google Earth Studios and kind of shows you how to, you know, just play around with it. So then what we're going to go ahead and do is go up to render here in the top right. And you can name this Paris Day, because I'm going to also render out a night version. And then I like to make the textures high, map style clean. If you want to have markings or whatever of stuff on the map, you can do that, or you can do everything. Um, not exactly sure why you would want that, but maybe you would. So it's always an option. I'm going to keep it clean for right now, so it looks like more like a drone shot. And then you can change the settings. You can make it 4K, 8K, whatever you really want. And then I'm going to do frames 0 to 300. It's uh, how long the composition was for our case. And then go ahead and click Submit. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to render it out. You can see it renders to the cloud, so you can see all of these other renders that I've had. It takes a little bit to load or whatever, but you can see all these other renders that I've used in the past. So it's actually not putting in any strain on your computer. It can do it completely with you closed out of here. And then I'm just going to drag it right where the widest field of view is, because that's where you're going to be able to see the solar system the most. I'm just going to line it up so it kind of lines up perfectly here. And then you can see the sky. The cool thing about this is, is since it's all digital, you could actually do time lapses. Like you could have it keyframe it like that and then have it like the sun rise. Uh, for our case, we're not going to do that, but I'll just show you that what that kind of looks like. Just cool looks that you can get. It's all really, really easy to do with Google Earth Studios. So like I said, just lining up the stars here with the Eiffel Tower. And then I'm going to go ahead and render this one out as Paris Night. Keep all the same settings. Make sure you don't change any of the keyframes between these two renders. So the night and day one should be exactly the same, same resolution, same dimensions, all that stuff. And then submit that for your render as well. While that's rendering, I'll show you a few clips. So this is the clip that you saw in the intro here. It's just Chicago, the Willis Tower, and it's looping with some RSMB and some black bars to kind of cover up those watermarks, as well as it's two shots actually combined. But since they're exactly the same, I went ahead and just masked out the skyline here. It's actually like a day clip. I'll show you the original clip. So here's the day one. It's pretty cool by itself. And then the night one. I think the night one would be a lot cooler if they added lights to all the buildings, but since it's not, that's why I like to have the day and the night together. Here's some kind of like drone shot almost or like zooms in that's pretty cool it does take a little bit of getting used to like i'm still not really super familiar with like all the positioning and stuff but i bet if you spent a lot of time you know practicing keyframes and kind of just learning about the software it'd become pretty easy and then here's one of the hollywood sign i just did so it's cool you can really do it anywhere it doesn't really matter too much just uh you know play around with it try out different things like that like split shot just came to mind because it's nice that you can just replicate the exact same motion every single time. So that's what I thought was so cool about it. All right, so this Paris one just finished downloading and this one's almost done and it's taken like 18 minutes. I wasn't expecting it to take this long. So we're just gonna start masking out the sky for this clip. Now that I'm thinking about it after I rendered it out, of course, 
Uh, I probably wouldn't have the sky with the sun flare on a clip that you're going to be masking out the sky for because it might just look a little weird. We're going to do it anyways. Just keep that in mind when you're doing yours. I mean, it's all like personal preference or whatever, but it might just look a little weird. But this is the same concept, so I don't think it's too big of an issue. You guys understand where we're going at, and you saw that clip of the Chicago one. So I think we're fine. I'm going to go ahead and go up here to the pen tool, click on our layer, and just start off. I'm going to start off like halfway through, just so we can see where we're at. Mask that out, and then I'm going to go to the mask here, and then I'm going to expand it, go to none. That way we can just mask right now without being interfered at all, as well as keyframe the path. And then I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and go back 10 frames. And then hold shift. And that will allow you to move these positions freely. And I'm just going to do 10 frames at a time. You can go through and tweak a little bit more often. Honestly, I think 10 frames is pretty good because then it gives you that smoother look. And this is the most tedious part about the whole process, but I definitely think it's worth it when you get that look at the end. I would just try to get it as close to the skyline as possible. If anything, I would recommend going into the ground a little bit versus having it above the ground because you're not going to really be able to tell if it's cutting up out the ground back there anyways. And then towards the start and the beginning, you might have to tweak it a little bit more often. For example, here, I kind of like to do a lot more frames. That way you can just make it look better. And then once you've finally gone through and keyframed all of the spots, as you can tell at the beginning and the end, at the beginning and the end of the clip, I had to do a little bit more just because it was moving a little bit faster. But other than that, I did like 10, every 10 frames. You go to your mask and then go to subtract. And that is going to remove the sky from the clip. So now you can see here, if we play it, it doesn't look too bad. I did a little bit of a rough job maybe at the beginning there. And honestly, for the sun part, I think I did a pretty good job too. So I'm going to go ahead and feather it just a little bit, maybe like 20 pixels and mass expansion up a little bit so it takes out some of the ground and play that. We'll see what that looks like. I think that looks a little bit smoother. And hopefully our clip is done downloading right now which it is. So I'm going to go ahead and click download, we go into After Effects, and go ahead and drag that night clip on and just drag it directly behind the clip. As long as you export it with the same settings and the same file size and everything, it should line up pretty well here. For our case, it's looking pretty damn good. You can see it's a little bit weird that we have the sun there. Maybe if it lined up with the stars here, it would look a little bit better. But yeah, I would just recommend probably not doing the sky with the, the sun flare. But, you know, whatever you guys think looks good. I still think it looks pretty cool. And what we're going to go ahead and do now is file export and then add this to render queue. Then after that finishes rendering out, you can do the next step in Premiere or After Effects or really any video editing software that you want. I'm going to go ahead and use Premiere just so we can color correct a little bit and add some RSV and just stuff like that. So then I'm just going to scale it to frame size because the composition I was in before was not the same frame size. And then I'm going to scale it in just a little bit so we start losing this right here. I'm going to go ahead and make an adjustment layer. So go to project, new item, adjustment layer, click OK and then drag that above your clip. You can go ahead and add the crop effect on top of the adjustment layer, and then do maybe something like eight on the top and the bottom. And you can see here, this is what our clip looks like. That looks cool and everything. You can leave it exactly like this and you'll have a cool effect. But one thing I found that could really add to it, and I don't know why it started glitching out here. I probably just need to re-download the footage off the website. But for right now, tutorial looks good. It's just glitching out a little bit. I think it's just a render error in After Effects. But I'm gonna go ahead and add RSMB. This is a plugin, it's called Real Smart Motion Blur. And it's really good at adding motion blur to things that are just moving. So it just makes it look a little bit more realistic. You can see already it has a little bit of motion blur and kind of focuses in on the subject. You can go ahead and tweak the blur amount or the sensitivity. 
Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and render it out with default settings and see what that looks like. Most of the time, it looks pretty good, but depending on your clip or whatever, you might need to change the amount of blur and the sensitivity. Now you can see here with the motion blur, it adds a little bit of blur around the edges and maybe when we go into the Eiffel Tower, you can change the sensitivity to see if you didn't want it to blur as much around here. You can change that. You can see I did the same thing with the Chicago one. You can also go ahead and maybe color correct or something if you had footage that you wanted to match. Go ahead, add some contrast in, whatever, make it look a little bit more cinematic. Just keep in mind that you're affecting two clips basically. So everything you're doing is going onto the footage down here and onto the sky. So if you wanted to go ahead and do that with the masks before you went ahead and combine them, that might be a good idea. For us, I'm just gonna leave it alone for right now, but that's what you can do as far as color correcting. And then you can just highlight both the clips and hold Alt and duplicate them. And I'm just gonna delete the gap in between them. And you can do that as many times as you want to have the footage loop. And then once you duplicate it a bunch, you'll see that it's gonna loop perfectly here. And the reason is, is because we're able to control the motion and the start of the keyframes and exactly where the beginning is. But yeah, guys, if you made it all the way to the end, I really do appreciate you. Thank you very much. If you haven't already, like, comment, and subscribe. Go ahead and check out my website, ryandelmata.com. Check out my packs and my presets. It's the best way to support the channel and me as a creator. Let me know if you guys want some more Google Earth Studio tutorials. I had a really good time making this video, so just you know, let me know by saying something in the comments, dropping a like, sharing it with a friend, all that stuff. But yeah, guys, I'm out of here. Peace.